Um, welcome to our latest White Pod. I'm Simon Blaine, your host of White Labs, a full service marketing agency. Today's guest is Benoit. Benoit, feel free to introduce yourself and let our viewers know about your background. Uh, hi, Steven. I'm, uh, my name is Benoit. I'm a tech guy turned uh, here. I own a bakery in California. After a long career in tech and in the corporate world, I decided to uh, run my own business and uh, open a bakery, very local business. Awesome. What inspired you to create a bakery? Uh, you know, I was born and grew up in Paris. That's, you know, a big part mm -hmm. of it is I feel I have a very sort of natural taste and liking for all sort of big goods. It's kind of missing, you know, to uh, here for my for myself, for my family. So there's definitely a lot of appetite for these kind of products in the area. And it's a, it's a joyful, very fun, pleasant business to be in because people are coming in, they enjoy what you do, they tell you they enjoy it. And you have this direct connection with customers, which is nice. Awesome. Who, who is the ideal target audience uh, for the brand? You know, really the, uh, I would say, more affluent than average of uh, individual, professional, young and older people, really, you know, it's, it's a very wide range, but people usually who have some experience abroad, who uh, have tasted food outside the US, have, are nostalgic in some cases of traveling in Europe or traveling in France, uh, they appreciate sort of good food. It's really anyone who appreciates good food, you know, is usually enjoying what we do. Definitely. What, what makes you different than your competitors? Mostly, I think the talent that I brought with me, not my talent, but the talent I hired from France. Um, I have two bakers and two pastry chefs who join me for France who are really, really good. So they make fantastic products, very traditional, classic French way. So really, I think the big difference is these things, you know, at Maison Benoit, my, my bakery, you really feel like you're downtown Paris in a good bakery. That's amazing. What, what areas are you servicing? Servicing sort of the East Bay in the Bay Area. So um, the San Francisco Bay Area, but East Bay is this area, La Morinda, Danville. It's, a, it's an affluent sort of a area at the east of the Bay Area is not as well served when it comes to bakeries and French goods as downtown San Francisco, for example. So it's a good mix for me. A ton of competition and some, you know, the right demographic for what I'm doing. What are your, uh, what are your best selling items? Uh, you know, the pain au chocolat and the baguettes. But we sell okay. hundreds of baguettes every day and, and hundreds of pain au chocolat as well. Uh, that's what people like the most. Pain au chocolat, croissant, almond croissants. People are crazy about them. Almond pain au chocolat as well, but what's, yeah. what's your, what, what's, what's your favorite, what's your favorite item now? Oh, there's the pain au chocolat is I think in my top two, along with uh, brioche au sucre. So just a sugar brioche, super, super simple. Mm -hmm. I used to, uh, you know, eat this when I was a kid in Paris and I still have these memories and they taste just like they did. So I, you know, I love this more sophisticated, more complicated or, you know, fancy products. But those two are, you know, my, my go-tos. I love them. Oh, that's, all, that's, all, that's awesome. That's great. What's the uh, future plan for yourself? Oh, I, I'm doing this as a bit of a sort of second, third or whatever carrier, like, you know, last carrier. So I'm, I don't want to stretch myself too much. Maybe I'll open sort of one or two more, but they're very local of the local community and um and keep things sort of uh, simple for myself so uh grow this business within its sort of current boundaries more or less and uh enjoy life as i'm doing this and as you know people around me whether they work here or they're just customers people are happy around it sounds sounds sound it sounds good to me <laughs> what's been the most successful marketing strategy so far promoting the brand for me really it's been you know a lot of uh mostly instagram communications we've grown our instagram following quite a bit um after about eight months we, we have i mean it's not crazy but we have about ten thousand you know followers um just under ten thousand followers uh it's all been organic i haven't paid you know for anything People sharing their experience here, who influences some people with sometimes a hundred plus thousand followers who are, you know, doing posts or stories without me asking anything just because they like the place. Uh, so it's been mostly this organic marketing happening, you know, here 
and then trying to obviously execute on all the all the basics of um, you know SEO and doing this without really spending money. It's just being responsive to comments, resharing stories, getting you know people to um, yeah get information that's useful to them, fun sort of reels and nice images of the products as well. So I think really very sophisticated, which is kind of the interesting thing about this product. You know, and this this business as well it doesn't require a lot of heavy lifting marketing wise. You do good products, you communicate about it in a very straightforward way. It, so far, it's you know it's been working really well, and um, and same thing some some earned media as well. So you know unpaid media, but I had uh, the uh, local NBC channel do a, a broadcast from from here in the morning. I call it um, how's it called? You know the Today in the Bay, so it's the local version of the Today Show. Uh, SF Gate, which is a big awesome. publication around here, sort of did a nice article about us as well. So in sort of organic and trying to, say, feed this organic momentum that we've been having through regular communications on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, yes, keeping it sort of a very, I would say, very authentic, very organic uh, this way. Responding to all the posts, for example, myself, uh, trying to just awesome. same with the reviews, you know, trying to like be diligent on answering quickly to the reviews. Um, I'm using a, you know, a platform that's using me sort of stay on top of it, uh, which I really like. It's called Malu, M-A-L-O-U. Um, so just, you know, trying to uh, do the basics, but do them consistently and do them right. Of course. Well, a lot of our listeners have small businesses, medium-sized businesses like yourself, and are entrepreneurs. What 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 kind of challenge have you faced faced in the past few years, and how were you able to overcome them? You know, the thing that keeps me the most busy for sure is you know, hiring and the turnover of employees, which is very normal, very natural, I think, in this line of business anyway. So it's a kind of fact of life. I have to embrace it. That's definitely taking me, or like a good chunk of my time. Um, I've tried to automate as much as I can, really try to use off the shelf sort of offerings and platforms to just make things easy for myself. Don't take cash, which, you know, may or may not work for all businesses, but for me, it's just streamlines mm -hmm. the operations of the business quite a bit. I, you know, I've used Square sort of beginning to end more or less. So the website is powered on Square. Inventory management is on Square, all my POS, you know, and, and the kitchen displays, everything is running on Square. So having one, you know, as few platforms as possible for me has been useful to just make operations easier. But wherever I can sort of use a platform to automate those business operations, I'm doing it. And I can focus on, you know, a couple of things, just being there for customers, for customers to see me, um, spending some time doing, you know, the, the people operations, the hiring interviewing people I would say the logistics as well you know maybe there's a point when i grow where i don't need to do as much of logistics myself but for now a lot of the, the ordering of materials packaging this kind of stuff is a part that i haven't been able to automate or take off my plate too much so it still requires a good amount of my time but i'm still learning about the business i've been open for less than a year it's been off to a really exciting start I'm still, you know, I'm still a newbie in the business for sure. Definitely. And any advice you can give an entrepreneur that's looking to start a new business here in 2025? It's just like, you know, focus on the quality of the offering, quality of the product that drives, in my case, that drives absolutely everything else. Drives up the review, drives up the SEO, calls for like, you know, the press's attention, the word of mouth growth. It's really, you know, what is at the, uh, at the foundation of everything, I think, when it comes to success, particularly for a small business. It's hard, I think, to repair a reputation. But if you can start fresh with really good products, uh, put the focus on this. No, you know, don't try to grow too fast. Just try to make some, you know, some good stuff. I firmly believe the rest will take care of itself. That's, at least for me so far, it's been working. So knock on wood, I hope it continues this way. But um, if the product is good, Everything else, you know, tends to follow. Awesome, Benoit. Is, is there anything I haven't asked you you want our listeners to know about yourself and the and the brand? I mean, for me, it's, you know, um, 
online presence, even for a super, super local business like our business, where a lot of customers, you know, are just walking by and see us and, you know, stop by and then people will talk to their neighbors about us and all this. But then like having a website, is super helpful in terms of uh, growing the business. So having a strong online presence uh, with a very well functioning sort of simple website where people can place orders can inquire and reach out to you. This is, you know, is, I think, um, really quite, yeah, quite foundational in terms of getting the, the business being efficiently and, and getting uh, customers to uh, come back, you know, often. Definitely. Amazing advice. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the WhitePod and sharing your story. I, I appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Thank, thank you. you.